If you've ever consumed magic mushrooms and experienced the psychedelic alteration of your consciousness and your perception, you have experienced the mind-altering effects of the psilocybin molecule. It's a profound chemical, and despite the stupid legal prohibition against it and the deceitful propaganda that's misinformed the public about it for decades, psilocybin has slowly emerged from its political banishment to find use in therapy treatments for addiction and treatment-resistant depression. Psilocybin is naturally produced in a few types of mushrooms. And as it stands now, these mushrooms, or even just their mycelia, have to be cultivated in order to harvest and administer the chemical. And unfortunately, this is where a bit of uncertainty comes in. Depending on the growing conditions, the growth medium, the cultivator's techniques, the species or strain of fungus, and even the idiosyncrasies of individual mycelium and individual mushrooms, the actual quantity of psilocybin in any given bit of fungus can vary quite a lot. This can make it difficult to administer consistent doses to a patient in a therapeutic setting. It can make it difficult to get consistent effects if you're eating them recreationally. Furthermore, the fungi also produce a host of other compounds, which can affect the body in various ways, including some compounds that interfere with the metabolism of the psilocybin molecule and its derivative, psilocin. All of these variables can affect the intensity, duration, and the nature of the altered mental state. So it's really cool news that researchers have been able to cultivate bacteria that produce pure psilocybin. The study explains their process and was published in the journal Metabolic Engineering. From the abstract, the authors say, quote, here, we present the development of a modular biosynthetic production platform in the model microbe Escherichia coli. Efforts to optimize and improve pathway performance using multiple genetic optimization techniques were evaluated, resulting in a 32-fold improvement in psilocybin teeter. Further enhancements to this genetically superior strain were achieved through fermentation optimization ultimately resulting in a fed batch fermentation study with a production teeter of 1.16 grams per liter of psilocybin. This is the highest psilocybin teeter achieved to date from a recombinant organism and a significant step towards demonstrating the feasibility of industrial production of biologically derived psilocybin." Unquote. All right, so that was a lot of technical information, but essentially what they did is that they inserted the genes for psilocybin production into some E. coli bacteria, and they cultivated this strain by selecting for those that produced the most psilocybin, until eventually they derived a strain that produced 32 times more psilocybin than what they started with. The benefits here should be obvious. First, by producing psilocybin through E. coli bacteria, the researchers are able to produce a pure compound unpolluted and unadulterated by various other compounds found in the fungus. Second, E. coli bacteria can be easily grown and mass-produced in nutrient vats, so this means that they can quickly produce a large quantity of pure psilocybin. It's easy to grow E. coli, so if you have these GMO E. coli and it's easy to grow them, then it's easy to produce a large amount of psilocybin. Third, this reliable production of large quantities of pure psilocybin means that treatment doses for use in behavioral therapy can be much more consistent. Therapists can administer known quantities of the compound, instead of relying on the raw mass of the fungus and just hoping for some degree of consistency from session to session and patient to patient. All of these things are great advancements that will improve the public's perception of psilocybin safety and therapeutic validity. The facts of the matter are that psilocybin is a very safe compound, and it has a lot of therapeutic potential. It's very useful for treating uh, mental illnesses and psychological issues, but because of its legal prohibition and because of government-sponsored propaganda, the public's perception of psilocybin has been hugely tainted. The public largely sees psychedelic mushrooms as silly, somewhat dangerous, hippie drugs that can burn out your brain. And unfortunately, this could not be further from the truth. The reality is so different. The reality is that psilocybin is a healthy, natural compound 
that human cultures have been integrating into their spiritual practices for thousands of years. You could even make the argument that psilocybin mushrooms have co-evolved with humans to be cultivated by humans. Psilocybin and other psychedelics like DMT, Ibogaine, Ketamine, and MDMA are all experiencing a renaissance in psychological medicine, and research like this will only make these therapies more reliable and more effective. I'm really excited to see where this field of research takes us in the near future, because these chemicals are powerful and profound, and above all, they're some of the most effective things that we have for treating some of the most common mental illnesses that exist, like anxiety, depression, and addiction.